Welcome to another episode of How To Dragon Con. My name is Kong and I will be your guide. Today we're going to talk about hotels, lodging, and where to stay. I want to talk about this early on just because I think it's one of the most uh, difficult aspects of attending Dragon Con. Um, definitely the most expensive, um, even more than the ticket or the badge itself. So from the beginning, um, let me clarify that there are five host hotels. These are the five that will actually house the programming, the events, the panels. Um, and in addition to that, there is a closed circuit TV uh, broadcast that will be available in your hotel room. So that's what sets these five aside from the other hotels that are in the downtown area. Um, and of course, you know, they're going to be the closest ones to the, some of the events that you want to go to. So which ones are they? Um, you have the Hyatt, the Marriott, the Hilton, the Sheraton, and the Westin. So these are prime real estate. And uh, if you're watching this video outside of a few select day as days out of the whole year, um, you've probably missed the chance to already grab them. Um, so I'm sorry in advance. But it's not the end of the world, right? So there are some resources that I'm going to have linked down below. Um, the first one or two is going to be some different maps that kind of give you an idea of where the hotels are, how the layout of the con is uh, configured around the downtown area. The second link is for the Dragon Con Hotel Connection, which is probably the most important resource you can have if you want to get an idea of when the hotels go on sale, um, you know, any tricks and tips on how to actually acquire them. And uh, just really, that's gonna be the best to keep track of all the important dates that are associated with hotels. The second resource I'm gonna have down below is the Dragon Con Rooms group. And this is really like for finding roommates, room shares, and also transferring your rooms I say transfer because technically you're not allowed to sell your room. Um, and I think people will definitely look down on you if you're trying to make a profit out of this. But if you're legitimately trying to dump your room because you can't go, um, that would be the best resource to go to. Going back to the five main host hotels for a little bit, two of them I can tell you um, are in a legacy system, which means that if you don't already have a room right now, and you're a newcomer and you're trying to get into them, you're basically out of luck. They have a certain allotment, uh, a block that they have for con attendees, and it's completely composed of the people who have gone before, who have stayed in the rooms before. So again, if you don't have it already, you're not gonna be able to get it unless one of those people transfers it in your name. And then going forward, um, you are pretty much guaranteed a room every year as long as you meet the requirements as long as you fill out the forms and everything that the hotels want you to do so again that's the Hyatt and the Hilton the other three which are all owned by the Marriott group including the Marriott the Sheraton the Westin you still have a chance um, of actually getting them if you're coming to the con for the first time or trying to get a room for the con for the first time they go on sale usually in the fall so this past year in 2020 for the con, I'm sorry, 2021, we've all lost track of time, uh, trying to get a room for Dragon Con 2022. They went on sale in the fall of 21. So actually during con weekends, I think it was like the first weekend of September, um, that is when the Sheraton went on sale. A few weeks after that, the Westin went on sale later in September. And then um, in October is when the Marriott went on sale. And this is when, you know, hundreds, thousands of people flood to the same website. Of course, the site's going to be overloaded. You're going to have a lot of people who never got it. And, you know, arguably within a few minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the most, all the rooms are going to be gone. So I just want you to have the realistic expectations of what to expect. So if you don't luck out during those select days and don't get it again, try to go back to the room connection. Um and then try to go to the room sharing group as well. So um, I would like to say that if you're not on Facebook, unfortunately, there's not really a good resource for it. You can try Reddit. Um, sometimes people will have different links before they go on sale. 
And of course, you can check the Dragon Con um, main website, although that's not updated as frequently. But if you check their social media like Facebook or Twitter, um, they too will, of course, announce when the uh, main host hotels will go on sale. So that's the first group. Um, more than likely, you're not going to be able to get any of these, right? So it's not the end of the world. There are still several um, off-site hotels, which are really just a few blocks away from the con events. Um, and in fact, some of them may be closer to some of the con events that you're trying to go to, um, just based on the location, the geography. So there's plenty around. Um, the best source for that is actually the Dragon Con main page. There should be a website link um, for all the overflow hotels, and I will link that as well for you to look at. These, their, um, I guess like reservations aren't really announced ahead of time. Um, you can try calling the hotels individually. The prices aren't really going to be that much cheaper uh, from the main host hotels just because they are all in the same area. It's still a holiday weekend in Atlanta, so a lot of the hotels are going to be bumping up their rates to about double or triple what they would normally charge outside of that weekend. Uh, just as a frame of reference, the last year that I paid for 2022's um, reservation, the Hilton Room, after taxes and fees and everything else, came out to about 285 a night for me. Um, and a lot of the hotels, especially the host ones, they're starting to require minimum nights requirements. So that might be three, four, maybe more. Um, so again, this is why this is going to be the most costly and difficult aspect of trying to go to the convention. So that's the second tier, right? The, the overflow hotels. If you can't do that, or if you happen to live in the metro Atlanta area, um, certainly you can commute. I would definitely consider not driving in, again, just because it's a holiday weekend. A lot of the parking spaces are going to be pretty much full. They're pretty jacked up in prices as well. You're probably looking at at least $20 to $30 minimum a day um, or even just for a few hours. And you're going to have a lot of difficulty just trying to navigate through some of the one-way streets to get into the parking lots. So, you know, maybe kind of hold off on that. If there's any way that you can drive and park at one of the MARTA stations, I would recommend that at least as part of your overall plan. Um, because a lot of the MARTA stations do have free daily parking. So if you're not there more than 23 hours, it is free. And then you can actually take the train directly to the station called Peachtree Center, which is N1 on the north and south line. That literally drops you off um, a block away from the Hyatt. So it's actually very convenient. And if you happen to be flying in to Atlanta, um, you can actually take MARTA directly from the airport, straight shot north, um, about 30, 35 minutes, and you will drop off at the Peachtree Center and you're at the con. So that's a very convenient thing to consider. The only thing to remember about MARTA is unfortunately they do stop running um, around 12.30 or one o'clock at night. So if you want to stay for some of the late night festivities, you may have to call an Uber or a Lyft or find some other way to get back. So that's the main drawback about that. Um, the last thing I wanna to touch on, there are some Airbnbs and rentals that you can look at. However, I've heard some horror stories about some of the hosts canceling at the last minute. That doesn't really give you a lot to work with when you're having to scramble, you know, just a week or two away from the con. And yeah, Airbnb is gonna reimburse you, but you're still out of a room and that's probably going to just be that much harder when you're so close to the event to try to find a hotel room or backup lodging option. So just something to be aware of. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts and advice for hotel rooms. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment and I will see you next time. Bye.